now in the fourth industrial revolution, a time known for its advancement in technology and giving you all new abilities. You all must be using phones, right? Laptops, you have watches, headphones, your data is in the clouds, and you must be using a lot of services with your gadgets. Let's think about this a little bit more, how this is made. Imagine that those technological solutions that we have today is developed based on the thoughts of a single group of people. They would define the problems and come up with conclusions as per their experiences and knowledge. Now, imagine that these were all men. This is what's happening in almost all the technological discussions. This is the reality. We women, who form more than half of the population, who would be using these products and services, and sometimes those inventions are specifically only for us. But we are excluded from the tables where these revolutionary decisions are made, excluded from the places where it is made. We know that we women come up with the wealth of knowledge and superpowers. <laughs> Thank you. We are taskmasters at home, and sometimes we bring extraordinary solutions to everyday simple things, be it from finding your kids' missing socks in line plain sight, to raising and educating them. We have shown that we are logical thinkers and we do it meticulously. Now, did you know that the world's first computer programmer was a woman? In the 1840s, Ada Lovelace wrote the first computer program. Now I want you to imagine your life without Wi-Fi. Again, a woman. It's a dilemma we have to be thankful for. So those women, they, were part, they created this future that we have today, but very few of us know about it. Well, now let me ask you, have you ever, ever thought technological career for you, your wife, your sisters, and your daughters? Well, my parents, they never thought the same. They actually had no idea that you can actually build a career out of technology. I never thought that I will be working like this. Anyways, because I didn't see any woman in my community, nor did I hear anyone mention something like this. Growing up in my island, Formula, you know I was very good at activities, friends, and books were not my thing. When you are not very good at studies, you know, people think, think that you settle for anything you get in life. That was an advantage for me. And I was thinking, when people started asking me, Aisha, what are you going to be? Then I thought, will I even have a career? OK, what am I going to be? Will I fit into the default box? set by the society, the default of being raising only children and doing only housework. I knew I wanted to do something more, be something more. And as I was growing up, I had a younger brother who was very passionate about computers, but I don't remember that me being passionate about it that time. Anyway, I had to choose something because I wanted to be something more. I thought, okay, let me give it a try. My curiosity made me choose technology. Believe me, studying was a difficult struggle and finding jobs were hard. There was a time I started my master's degree and I couldn't continue it. I had to quit halfway through. And this thought of quitting 
and leaving it halfway through haunted me every single day. And for the next five years, I worked, I earned enough to start it over again. This time, it was a bit different. On the day of graduation, I found out something. Guess what? Yes, I was the only woman in my batch and the only one to receive a distinction from my master's degree. Thank you. So, as part of uh, the work I've been doing, once I attended a career guidance session organized for some female students in a school. I was so excited, right? I was doing a lot of things. I was trying to explain them how technology gave me power, how it has given me a decent pay, as well as like how it allows me to use creativity and the variety of job roles it offers. I was waiting and waiting, okay, with other extraordinary women, and seconds turned to minutes, and minutes to hours. No one, not even a single student looked at me. I was so, you can imagine this, right? I was there, in tears. That day, after that day, things changed. I never wanted to quit or I just wanted to say, say like, look girls, there's a lot more for you in the field. And now let me ask you, have you ever seen a woman working in the technology field? Be it a computer programmer, a network engineer, a data scientist or a technology manager like me. Did you know that in the USA, only 27% of people working in the technology field are women? But this number is rising a bit, 31% in the UK. And you know that numbers like this shows that we are still minorities. We have more work to do. And Maldives is not different. We have more work to do. Anyways, I was attending a lot of sessions, community events. That's when I realized I needed to do something about this. Who is there for me? One day, one event, I met two of my friends, Nisha and Shahu, who have the same concern as me. Like, well, why do we have so few women? Yeah, and then we started connecting to people, calling people, and is there anybody you know in working in the technology field? Believe me, it was hard to explain the technology and these careers, but we give, gave it a try. And that was our greatest discovery. We discovered there are so many Moldavian amazing women who work in the computer field, and there were also women who gave up their careers to raise their children. And yes, and we started celebrating women to share in their stories on social media. And this made even the government and private sector to celebrate with us. And thank you. And today we have the seat there, but we need more women to push this. And as part of our work, we do try to reach younger children. You know that when you live in an island community, you know what happens, right? Communities live by the stories. And we know that when you start it, you are influenced by the people around you. When children see teachers, they think of becoming teachers. When they see nurses or doctors, they think of becoming doctors. But together, we can create a place where you have more women creating amazing websites, apps, work with data and new inventions. So how do we do this? How can we together create this environment for kids? Firstly, I would say, as I mentioned before, start believing in your children. Even today, my mother doesn't know 
much about the work I do. Still, they believe that I'll make the right choice. The world ahead is very complex. As parents, you might not understand what's there, and our children know more than we do. Secondly, start celebrating women. And you know that communities live by the stories you say, and you have the power to change the communities and inspire more women to join technology field. And as women, we know that being women, we can raise the most complex being in the world, right? Yes, children. And you know, it's a lot about raising children and technology. You see something very common. That this is something that I also realized when I got a child. Raising a child demands you to love them a lot. Going through what if scenarios. I'm sure you, you will also be growing with them, right? Yes. The same accuracy, you have to fall in love with the technology. And believe me, you cannot run tests when raising children, but in technology, you can. You can do tests and you can undo your errors. So finally, let's think about creating more role models and mentors so that girls have somebody to look into. And then together, you will be helping them to realize their dreams, helping them to believe in it because there are a lot of Maldivian women trying to create their space in the technological world. They have shown that success is attainable from wherever you start. And if you believe you can, you truly can. Thank you.